Tim, you know what I'm doing right now? You're working out. I'm working out. You know what? This is really good. I used to tell people, it is true. I don't have to go to the gym because I am Jim. I'm actually Jim T. Chong, the walk star. And I am with Jim Meyer from Remax Gold. And we are with Miranda Forcier with Forcier Fitness. <laughs> wow. Awesome. I think we'll just end right. She did the. That's why I have sleep. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. 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 Those guns. Well, look at those guns. Oh, Whoa, those God. are hot. Oh, you know, those Whoa. are hot. Well, you know, you know, one thing, Jim, Jim, um, we can't do that here on this show because we don't want people to think we're drawing attention with our guns. So we gotta <laughs> keep a little more <clears throat> low key. But um, one thing I think about fitness is it's really important. I know about that, Jim, right now, especially right now in this economy. But uh, anyway. Uh, you know, Miranda, I just wanted to start off with a quick question here, right? There is a lot of things going on right now over the last few weeks, specifically. But I know people are at home, and one of the comments I'm hearing, outside of the fact that people can't find toilet paper, and it is starting to become a little more abundant, is the fact that, you know, people are gaining a few because they're at home, and they're eating, and really there's not as much exercise, you know, I would love to see what the answer to that is right now, because I have a definite need. I mean, I'm in good shape, Jim, but not as good as I could be. Uh, any thoughts from you on this? Absolutely, Jim. You know, I, I'm going to, you know, agree with everything that everybody is doing right now, because the first week of that quarantine I didn't give two licks what I was eating or doing. I was just trying to survive and figure out, you know, this new way of living, right? Um, so it is very hard. And thankfully, this is my profession. So I know the steps that I need to take in order to get back on track and get out of that rut. Um, but a lot of people don't. And it's totally understandable, right? I don't know anything about what teachers are going through because I'm not a teacher. So, you know, what I recommend to people is, get some kind of a schedule, right? It's just like anything, you know, like you need a schedule for work so you can stay on task um, and to reach your goals. Well, if you don't want to put on a few pounds, then you're going to have to do the things that you're not already doing, which includes creating some kind of a schedule. Um, if you can just manage what's going in and what kind of movement you're doing, then you uh, will be, you'll be pretty set. Well, let me tell you what teachers are going through right now uh, because I married one. And uh, they're still taking home a paycheck. They don't have to work for the rest of the year. And not only do they still get all the weekends and holidays off that uh, you and I might not get off, they're getting the rest of the year off. So God bless teachers. Uh, you know what? I'm hey, I want to make a comment about. there, Jim. Yes. Jim, first off, teachers, I want to give a shout out to all the teachers. Uh, in all sincerity, we respect it. I think you've earned the pay because you are about our future generation. And so um, I, I know that, uh, you know, just in all sincerity, we have a lot of fun here, but I just want to acknowledge those of you that are really here taking care of our kids because it, it is a trying time here. So I just wanted to. Really well, my, my teacher wife was just at the window staring in, wondering who we were interviewing. So uh, <laughs> I had to say that for her. Um, so Miranda, we, we'd love to see you on Facebook every single day and, and, and on uh, Instagram also, correct? And yeah. You're giving us a workout. You're motivating us, and you're right there in your garage. Is that your garage? And this is uh, garage. It's pretty yeah. exciting. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty. I'm pretty fortunate because I am a mobile trainer. I drive a large van that carries all of this equipment. Um, so I was able just to kind of transfer that into my home garage and make a space for myself, which is awesome. And uh, but I also realized that not a lot of people have these types of resources. Um, so I'm actually training for my first bodybuilding competition. And I really want to help people who are struggling with being stuck at home with limited resources. So not only do I post workouts on my Instagram face, uh, my Instagram page, with, which is or CA Fitness. Ah, I can do this. Um, <laughs> so I post videos on how to do the exercises. I'm explaining it. It's neat video and I will even write out a plan for you to do on your own. Um, but I also thought, you know, maybe people would like to see kind of what I'm doing right now in this quarantine um, and also get a little bit more of an idea of 
you know, what kind of a trainer I'm like, uh, how I like to train, how I educate my philosophies, because every personal trainer is different. And if you're trying to find someone that helps you, it's kind of like finding a good therapist. You need to make sure it's like the right fit. Everyone has their own philosophies and ideas about health and fitness and how to get to your specific goals. So I thought, what the heck, I'm going to just put my video or my workouts out there on live, um, on Facebook live and you know, whoever wants to watch can watch. And then as I'm doing the exercises, I'll say things like, Hey, well, if you don't have a dumbbell, this is what you would use instead. And this is how you use it. And just trying to help people, you know, figure out you know, how to use what they already have. Well, uh, Jim Chung is always looking for a dumbbell, and that's when he calls me. And that's why we're so good together. <laughs> oh, don't be show. too hard on yourself. That's only partially true. <laughs> so, so, Brenda, I'm guessing you cannot go out with your van at all now and meet anybody, correct? So when it's over, what do you, what's your expectation when the quarantine is over? You know, it's a little scary. <laughs> it's a little scary to think about. Um, you know, I've been a mobile personal trainer for the last three years, um, and I was the only one that was doing that, and now every trainer is doing it, which I'm, I'm super happy, and I'm very excited because the more trainers there are, the more people that can get help, right? Because I'm not going to be for everybody, and, you know, just like everyone else. So um, what I'm really hoping is, first of all, just kind of get back to what I was doing, offering the mobile training, offer remote training as well. I've been doing a lot more of that recently. So getting on Skype or FaceTime and uh, exactly how you see me, I'm sitting here, I'm watching my clients like do their workouts, explaining it as if I was there. Um, that's going to be at a super discounted rate. And then still offering that in the gym. Uh, so my clients would meet me at my gym. Uh, for kind of the next tier up. And then the mobile training is like the top tier. Um, so I'm not expecting to get too many mobile um, personal training sessions just because of finances. I know a lot of people are struggling right now. So I really want to do as much as I can for everybody at any kind of, um, you know, price limit. So that's kind of my game plan. But ultimately, I'm just going to see where life takes me and where, you know, I need it. I'll go. Wonderful. Oh, that's really good. Hey, Jim, I think it's yeah. a good time to give a shout out to one of uh, our really good friends, Bunny Stewart, because mm -hmm. I think what you're saying is right now is a great time for virtual <laughs> workouts, right? Kind of an inside joke there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we, we, you know, I think, but no, you know, basically um, it's really important during this uh, time, especially for people to stay fit. What are you noticing? Are you talking to people and what, what are they personally sharing in terms of what they're doing or maybe not doing? And, um, you know, some of the clients you're working with right now, how, how, how's, how does that happen right now? Yeah. So, um, well, you asked a lot of questions just now, so let's see. Um, <laughs> I, I always have to say, Jim, one at a time, please. <laughs> You know, this, okay. is, this is a multitasking, all about the new economy. No, but you can go ahead and deal with that. Um, uh, one, I love one it. Person. Yes. No, I'll do my best. <laughs> um, so first of all, a couple of things that I'm hearing that people are doing wrong, right? Let's start with that is, um, you know, I'm having a hard time staying active. I'm going for walks um, and I'm going for runs, but, you know, that, you know, I do that for a couple of days in a row and then I take a day off and then I take another day off and then I'm just not feeling it on the third day. And it's like, it's kind of this spiral effect. First of all, do something that makes you happy, that you're excited about, right? And do it in a space that feels good, right? I'm excited to come into this gym. And before this quarantine, I hated working out at home. Like, I never understood why my clients like working out at home. But, uh, you know, once I created a space that was just for my workouts, it wasn't shared with the living room or the dining room or my office, right? It's my workout space. I'm able to really, you know, this is my energy to get stuff done. Right. It's not nothing else. I don't have any distractions. That's the other thing is you want to make sure you don't have any distractions. Um, you need to treat your workouts like any other appointment. Right. If you have an appointment with your boss, you're not also going to be doing the dishes. Right. <laughs> you're going to stick to that appointment and you're going to give your full undivided attention to your boss. The same thing for your workouts. You can't be answering phone calls during your workouts either. That's another way to derail you. Um, some things that I'm hearing that people are doing right. I, are you? <laughs> hey, this is my time. No. <laughs> uh-huh. I see you, Jim. <laughs> 
some of the things that uh, I'm hearing that people are doing right. Um, like I said earlier, they're creating a schedule for themselves. Like Monday, they watch a yoga video. Tuesdays, they do body weight exercise. Third, you know, Wednesdays, they go for a run. And then they create some kind of a nutrition plan for themselves. Um, when you create a nutrition plan for yourself, this is the other thing I'm hearing people doing wrong is they're like, I don't, can't go to the grocery store all the time and I can't get all this food and blah, blah, blah. Your nutrition shouldn't be complex right? It's just meat, vegetables, some kind of a starch. Um, and that starch is going to be, depending on what your goals are, um, pretty much sweet potatoes are like the way to go for any kind of goal or uh, physique type. But uh, for me personally, like I'm doing a lot of jasmine rice because I'm trying to bulk out uh, for my competition. Um, and I'm doing a lot of potatoes. <laughs> so, you know, that's it. And I eat the same thing every day. I spend like $50 of like a week on food. That's it you know, and that's six meals a day. So <laughs> did you, you say know, $50 a week, fun. Jim? Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, do, do we, I spent $50 on toilet paper. So, right? um, but I, I buy it on the street. So yeah, <laughs> hopefully not a reused. crazy time. But anyway, that's a whole other good thing there. Wow. But that's really, that's really incredible, uh, advice, you know, I mean, and it takes, I'm sure it takes uh, a lot of planning, uh, you know, um, you know, just, just what got you involved, you know, in what you're doing right now? Why, why mobile first? And then yeah. what got you involved? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to sidestep a little bit and go to the planning thing. So um, that is another thing that I, I hear a lot of people like, oh, I don't have the patience to meal prep. I don't have the patience to do this or that. Or that. That's fine. You know, all I tell my clients is be honest with yourself. Right. Like if you really want to get, um, let's say Invisalign, but you don't have the money, you're going to save up the money and not do other things so that you can get Invisalign. Just that there's nothing different with your health and fitness. If you want something bad enough, you'll make the time, you will make it a priority. And then it'll just be like second nature. Eventually, the more you do something, the more you don't have to think about it. I barely have to measure anything anymore because I can eyeball it now. Right. In the beginning. Yeah. It took a lot of time, but now I can get through it super fast. So it's all about how much effort and how much time do you want to put into practicing something that you want to see change. Right. Um, so now to answer your next question, why mobile? Um, oh man. Well, I used to work um, for a, a local large gym here. I, I don't want to give any names. Um, they are, you know, very popular and they're successful for a reason. Um, but I felt like they were too much after like money and uh, I wanted just to help people. I was finding also that I was meeting a lot of people who, couldn't get a personal trainer because they have kids and they you can't find daycare or they're really busy and they don't have time to drive to the gym, work out and drive home. Or, you know, there's all these excuses or, you know, seniors, they can't drive. Right. So going to them was, you know, a need. And I saw that need. I'm like, you know what? I could, I could do that. I could be a personal trainer and go to my clients and help them with working out at home with whatever they have, because I want to see people successful. That's all that I'm in this for. Um, and then what got me into this? Oh my gosh. Uh, the short version. Let's see. So I grew up, um, as an actress and a dancer. Um, so, you know, doing, you know, contemporary ballet, jazz, like that kind of dancing all throughout, um, you know, grade school, even into college, got my dance minor in kinesiology. Um, as soon as I got my minor, I was 20 years old, and I started focusing on my bachelor's, which is communication, and I started gaining weight um, because I stopped dancing, and my best friend at the time was a bodybuilder, and I told her, like, oh, I hate lifting, and I just want to do cardio all day, and, you know, can you help me because I'm gaining weight, and she's like, yes, and so she put me through um, a fitness plan. I hated it for the first two weeks, but after those two weeks, and I took my progress photos, I saw the huge change that my body went through. It was incredible. And I didn't even have to run a lot. It was amazing. And so now I hate cardio and I love lifting and it's all changed. Uh, but it's because I found something that I love, right? And so I immediately wanted to be a personal trainer at that point. But it's a really hard industry to make a living off of, especially when you are a 
20 year old who supports herself and is still going to college. Um, so I went the fitness modeling route instead and just learned as much as I could from other bodybuilders and personal trainers. Um, and then I had a, an unfortunate um, situation happen in my life that brought me back um, to Sacramento. And I was kind of given this blessing to start over. And I said, okay, I'm doing it. I want to be a personal trainer. I want to help people. And wow. um, here I am four years later. <laughs> That's wonderful. Now, how many hours a day should somebody dedicate to working out if they're going to take this seriously? Oh, that's a great question. So I usually, when I meet with someone for the first time, I ask them, what are you willing to commit to, right? Because there's what you should do and what you're willing to commit to are two very different things. Right. You know, I've met a lot of people who True. say, you know, like, well, what would you recommend? And I'd say, well, I recommend at least five days a week for at least an hour each day. And they go, okay, sounds good. And then they aren't able to sustain that because of their job or their family or something. And then they end up beating themselves up more or blaming me uh, for their failures. And then they fall even further off of the wagon. And that's not what I'm all about. So what I usually tell people is if it's your first time ever exercising or holding yourself accountable, just do 20 minutes, five days a week. All right, 20 minutes for five days a week, and every week slowly increase that amount of time, right? So 20 minutes goes to 30 minutes the second week, goes to 40 minutes the third week, goes to 50 minutes the fifth, you know, so by the time the month is over, you have gotten used to working out for an hour uh, five days a week. That is the ultimate goal, right? Obviously, the more you do, the faster you're going to get to your progress. Um, the less you do, the more likely you're not going to be successful because there's more off days than on days. Um, so I usually try to tell people, if you can be 80% good for the entire month, and that's diet and workouts, you will see some change. It's not going to be super like dramatic, but you'll at least see some change. And that's what I always tell people to strive for because – then you won't beat yourself up as much, which will, you know, make you go down that rabbit hole and, uh, and you'll eventually kind of get out of it as you're seeing the changes. That's great. Now, um, a lot of this is, uh, a lot of people are cooped up, uh, they're, they're in their house and uh, they're going a little stir crazy. Uh, working out can be a great way to change that because mentally it, it can really pull people down, especially if they're used to going to work for eight hours a day driving on the freeway every day now they're stuck with that that family and they've got to actually interact with the family uh <laughs> exercising can can get can help with depression because depression can can easily set in when when your life is goes upside down like this what uh and i'm guessing you have some some tips on that Yes, 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 yes. Mental health is so important. Um, I've been telling people, you know, if you're struggling mentally, emotionally, and physically, the first one you need to master is that mental. If you're not mentally healthy or happy or anything, everything else is going to suffer, which means your immune system is going to suffer, which means we can get sick, right? So, I mean, that already was something I preached a lot before the COVID-19 happened, but now that this is our reality, it's even more pertinent, right? So I'm telling people, like, don't stress out about diet and working out right now. If that overwhelms you and stresses you out, just focus on your mental health. What makes you happy? Um, definitely getting outside and going for a walk every single day has got to be top priority. I personally recommend doing that first thing in the morning. So I use my routine. I got a slow routine. But after I get done eating my breakfast and I get dressed and do take my supplements and everything, then I take the dogs for a walk. Um, we go at least a mile, if not longer, depending on the time I have. And just that fresh air moving, being around other energy sources, right? Birds, cars, whatever, <laughs> the air. Um, that all is really going to help with your mental state. And then, you know, talking to yourself, I know it sounds weird, but like going through that mental checklist of the things that you like about yourself, which is really hard to figure out sometimes, like, what do I like about myself? But trying to come up with five different things that you appreciate um, for yourself. And then also just kind of going through, like, it's going to be a great day. 
I have an opportunity to change what I don't like today. I'm going to find something to laugh about today. Like that's the other thing is try to stay away from the dark, um, dramatic TV shows because it can be really easy to get sucked into those right now. Um, and try to watch something a little bit lighter, a little funnier so that you're making yourself laugh and you're not depending on anybody else to make you laugh too. That's really going to heighten your mental, um, mental health. And then everything else will just start to kind of fall into place. Uh, but you definitely do have to have some kind of a challenge. You have to be working towards something. So if you're like me and uh, work is really slow right now and you're kind of going crazy because you don't know like what else you could possibly do, come up with some kind of a challenge, right? Maybe it's, uh, maybe you want to color and you want to just finish a picture, right? Or maybe it's a puzzle or maybe it's get your butt in shape and then you hire a personal trainer and they give you this goal and you work at it every day. I mean, I spend at least four hours a day on myself, right? Because if I don't, I'm going to get so wrapped up in all the chaos and all the negativity and everything that's going on. And I'm going to feel like a failure and I'm going to feel like, you know, I, I didn't do enough before COVID-19 to prepare and like all of these really awful things that are going through our heads right now. That would consume me if I didn't stay focused on one specific thing, and that is to make myself better. I have a goal for myself. I'm going to reach it. I'm not going to let anything get in my way. And you'd be amazed at how many things will start falling into your lap, even when you're stuck at home, when you, you put yourself first and you work towards a goal. So again, having that schedule is super, super important to help with that mental, emotional, and physical health. Wow. You know, a question I have, when we talk about mental health, a lot of people may have different definitions of that. When you're referring mm -hmm. to mental health, what specifically are you talking about? And, you know, we do hear about this today. You know, mental health is so very important. What exactly are people talking about when they're referring to that? That is a really great question. Um, so I have a, a very strong passion for um, suicide. And uh, that's kind of where I always go towards when I talk about mental health, that depression that sits in. Because it's such a debilitating illness is how I'm going to call it. Uh, or you can right. even say injury. I mean, it's just like anything. I remember when I first had my... Um, the mo my first low point, we'll say. Um, and I was, I was depressed and on antidepressants. I hated it because it made me feel weird that I had to take this pill. But someone told me like, well, if you hurt your back, wouldn't you go to rehab to fix it? Well, yeah. Well, your brain is the exact same thing. You have to give it some time to rehab, to grow, to, to, um, to become stronger, right? So, you know, giving your, you have to look at your brain just like any other physical thing that you see. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not real. But a lot of people um, are kind of suffering with this spiral depression of feeling sorry for themselves, feeling bad, feeling hopeless, you know, feeling like, you know, the world is ending, which it definitely feels like that, and that they're never gonna get out of this. And they, you know, were struggling before, and now they're struggling even more. And it's just this negativity um, it, that's kind of how I correlate mental health is, um, you know, negativity, positivity, depression, things like that. Keeping yourself, like learning how to keep yourself happy and not depending on anybody else. Um, so the whole thing, I mean, I've, I've not only, I'm a suicide survivor. Um, I've witnessed somebody, you know, commit suicide. I have attempted it myself. It's, it's really, it's a really hard illness to, to work through but it is possible, you know, and that's one thing that I, and all of my videos on, I don't know if you guys noticed that on my Facebook, but every video I end it with, you know, choose life, choose happiness. You have the choice to be happy or sad or stressed or whatever. And it is a lot easier sounding than it actually is. But if you can distract yourself with something good, like some kind of a plan or a challenge, like I was just saying, you'll be amazed at how quickly you can get out of that and things will just start working out. Wow. Well, Jim. One, one challenge that you have, uh, Miranda, is that uh, you're a bodybuilder and uh, you showed us those nice guns of yours. Uh, is it difficult to compete against the ones that, that are taking the steroids or is that a whole different category? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, so there are actually natural competitions and then just other competitions. Okay. 
All you right. know, so um, the natural competitions, you actually get drug tested, um, and they take some of your blood so that they know for sure that you're not on steroids or anything like that. Um, but there are other different types of shows where you can um, do that. Uh -huh. I am doing it the all natural way. <laughs> I don't need anything else. <laughs> <laughs> messing me up. <laughs> I know, call me sexist, but when I when I see a female bodybuilder, I like her to look like a woman. I don't know. It's just that's totally fine. Yeah. Hey, I don't take any offense of that. You know, there. You know, I was. Um, I actually had a, a bit of a health scare about six months ago, and I was training for my competition then, and I was getting pretty yoked. I mean, like I had the veins and everything. It was like I loved it, and. I had a lot of people that told me, oh, man, I wish you had, like, some, you know, some more fat on your hips uh -huh. or here. And I'm like, okay, you can like whatever you like. Just like I can like whatever I like, right? Um, I personally am not, like, a huge fan of, like, the doo -doo, like the real beefy girls. Like um, Helga, I'm going for more right? of the like Helga, right? girls. You're not a Helga. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, like Helga, for sure. I'm going uh, for bikini bodybuilding. So that's like the very first level. Um, so you're just, you have a, a lot of definition, definitely muscles, but I mean, I'm not, I'm, not gonna, I'm checking this stuff out. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to see the muscles. I love it. And I love seeing it grow and how your body can change. And I never thought that I would be a bodybuilder too. So this is all a new revelation for me. And, and I'm going to guess a, a good goal that you can have for, for your clients, if they have no real goals, you can say, hey, when I'm done with yours, we progress, you're going to look in the mirror, and you're going to get excited when you look in the mirror. You're going to love looking at yourself. And I've got a feeling you you got a lot of people who you probably get to that level pretty quickly. Am I right? Wow. Uh, it the best feeling you guys like yeah. when I see somebody I always take progress photos of my clients so once a month and comparing their first photos to any of the other months even the, the after their first month it's like you see the difference in their face they just look happier you know they're not frumpy and sad they're like glowing even though there wasn't maybe a whole lot of change they better, they're happier, they're loving themselves, you know, they're finding, they think they're sexy, you know, they got confidence, like, and that's what I love the most, because if you can love yourself and look at, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I look in the mirror and I'm like, oh, man, you know, and I nitpick just like everybody else, um, but when I'm working out and I look in the mirror, I'm like, I'm doing this. Oh, this yeah. is all me. Yeah. You know, and it's like, it's kind of cool because I get to lift myself up. <laughs> well, I heard that you actually take that mirror with you wherever you go, like to Denny's or whatever. <laughs> that's true. Uh, right. Well, you know, um, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Um, this. Not that you need it. You're in great shape. Do skinny mirrors really work to help people make, make them feel better? <laughs> Uh, uh, first of all, I've never seen skinny mirrors. I would love to definitely to check that out. Uh, I'm going to say probably not because uh, those are few and far between. If you see that and then you go into your bathroom and you see the reality, that might do the opposite of that. <laughs> well, we could have the Jimmy mirrors, right, Jim? We could have the Jimmy mirror. Hey, one thing. I want to see you walk the talk. You do have some things that are behind you. Can you show us before we end out just some good exercises? You know what I mean? Like you're lifting 500 pounds with your pinky or something. I, I, I don't know. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Just show us a few exercises. Let's see here. Okay. Um, all right. I'm going to have to back this guy up real quick. All right. So um, one exercise is going to be, um, okay, we'll do a leg and an arm exercise. Sound good? Great. Okay. Let me grab my dumbbells. Okay, so this is going to be a, um, an R, we'll do a squat with an upright row. So it's going to be working the legs and it's going to be working uh, the shoulders and the biceps and a little bit of the back. So um, Jim, pay attention. Real quick, Jim. <laughs> I told Jim to pay attention. Both of us need the exercise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is a really easy one that you can do with uh, resistance bands or dumbbells or nothing at all. Uh, essentially, you can just do your body weight. Um, but you're gonna squat down. I'm, gonna, I'm doing a narrow squat. A normal squat would be a little bit wider here. But we're gonna go narrow, and then we're gonna press through the heels, come all the way up. 
bring the dumbbells in front and they're gonna come up. I don't know if you guys can see me, but all the way up to you. Okay, all the way up to your chin and then repeat. So squat, come in and up. That's one rep. Down, up, here. We'll go to the side. Keep the weight in your heels at all times um, so that your knee is protected. A lot of people will lift their heels off the ground and that's gonna be really bad for your knees. So you're gonna go down, keeping the chest lifted. Come all the way up with the dumbbells for your upper right row. Down and up. So now we're working the whole body, which is gonna get that heart rate going nice and fast, which means you're gonna burn more calories in a faster amount of time. Well, I love it. Well, here, question. So I know weights are very important and we wanna be careful in terms of uh, having too much weight, right? How did people determine the right weight for them? You know, should they start light great. five, 10 pounds or whatever? Yeah, great question. So um, I talk about this a lot in my live workouts because that's another thing that a lot of people, um, I feel like aren't educated enough on. Like I'll tell a client to do 10 reps uh, with 10 pound dumbbells and they'll do it and I'll be like, okay, next. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> was it that easy? You don't think that that's probably an issue? <laughs> you know, it should never be seamless, right? You should never do some, an exercise and be like, okay, great, next, right? Um, I usually tell people the last 25% of your reps, right? So if you're doing 10 reps, the last, you know, three are going to be very challenging. Um, if they, if you start feeling like it's, it's starting to get challenging at that halfway mark, then the weight is too heavy, right? But if you're able to get through all 10, no problem, it's too light. Um, and the other thing is right now, because we just want to be moving and most people are looking to lose some weight, I highly recommend a higher amount of reps repetitions and a lower weight, right? So if we're doing bicep curls, um, we're going to do 15 to 20 reps. Um, I'm, you know, I probably use the 10 pound dumbbells, right? Because by the time I got to 15, I'd be like, whew, this is getting kind of hard and feeling the burn, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, and then if you're wanting to build muscle, um, you would use a lower reps and a higher weight. So you're really, really challenging and tearing at those muscle fibers so that they grow and expand faster. Um, but ultimately, start low um, with the weight and high reps. Get the form down. Go nice and controlled. I'm not telling, you know, I'm not saying go super mm -hmm. fast. It's not about speed. It's about control. Right. Feel the muscle every time. Make sure you're extending and flexing all the way before you start picking up the speed. And then going that slow is also gonna make it more challenging. So the weight still might be a little too heavy. Well, we're almost uh, done here. Um, Jim, I wanna turn it over to you for any final interrogations, I mean questions. She makes this look so easy. I'm almost sitting here like, wow. I mean, really, is that all <laughs> it takes? And then, you know, I went on, uh, uh, no lie, no lie, no lie. Um, I went on a treadmill, you know, the, the, the things that the ellipticals, right? I'm like five minutes. I'm like challenged. Of course I can't do that right now. I don't have an elliptical at home, but uh, anyway, I'll turn this back over to you, Jim, just for any final questions you might uh, have. I'm, I'm intrigued. <laughs> well, Miranda, uh, first of all, thank you very much. We've been, we've been reaching out to your publicist and your, uh, your manager and your agent, and we finally got a hold of you, and we got you on our our doctor. Right, yeah. So we, <laughs> we love it that that uh, you're on one of our very first episodes, and uh, we appreciate the fact that you're uh, you're an inspiration for people to uh, to uh, work out, uh, to try to be uh, positive and have a good mental attitude, um, and. You know, for me, for my mental attitude, I always, you know, I get depressed too, but I always like to, to reach out to people who are more screwed up than myself so I can lift my self-esteem. And, and that's why I, I found Jim. So, <laughs> thank you. And we've become yeah, best yeah. friends. So, uh, we appreciate everything. And I love the fact that you're a great business person too. You know how to promote yourself. So, you could probably go out and give an hour long talk just on how to, to run a successful business. And uh, so, so it's great uh, just, just having you on our show. We appreciate you very much. Well, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you and what you guys are doing. If there's ever anything I can do to help you out, let me know. 
be more than happy to help you guys with your fitness too. You want to work out? Jim, hey, it sounds like a challenge for the power of Jim. I, I, I like it. We, we will talk yeah, about absolutely. that. Absolutely. Well, you yeah, show is the power of G Y M. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, you know, <laughs> That's why I, they tried to spell my name that way. I was a little child, and I said, don't spell it that way. Spell it J-I-M for that reason. But in all sincerity, um, we are at a very critical time right now. No, no matter where you're at listening to this, you know, it is a very serious time. And staying in shape, your health and wellness is so very important. And so with this, we just wanted to, to highlight the fact that you can do a lot of things here at home. I thank, uh, thank you so much, um, uh, Miranda, just for the great tips here. But, you know, if you do um, want to be able to stay fit, you know, contact Miranda. Miranda, what is the best way for people to reach you? Yeah, call or <laughs> call. Uh, call or text me. Um, uh, I think you guys are going to yeah, we'll, we'll have the We'll have the number here. That would be great. Yeah. And, and you, know, um, you know, just any final thoughts here? I know that there's a lot going on right now as a nation. I don't think we ever thought that this would really happen. Now, I didn't think so in my lifetime. Any final thoughts for people um, about anything, maybe about some things we talked about today or just in general for the general populace? I just want to remind everybody um, right now, if I asked you to think about something challenging that's happened in your life in the past, you're probably going to think of the worst possible thing. I also want to remind you that you succeeded and you progressed out of that challenging time. This time that we're in right now is no different. You will get past this. This will end. We will return back to a normal life. It's going to be a little different. Yes, but it eventually we will get through this. So just stay fast, right? Stay strong. Look towards the future. Keep challenging yourself and, uh, and keep choosing happiness in life. I love that. You know, it touched my heart. I, I think the next, next president might be a woman, <laughs> um, uh, you know, of the United States, right? But, um, yeah. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, I, I think that's our show for today. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. And we're going to see you next time on the Power of Gym. Gym. And I think also for <laughs> fitness. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Oh, Thank you, guys. Awesome.